we doing science shows. And I'm currently here with a group called Dr. Bad Science. It's a YouTube channel I started with an 11 year old boy who has autism and we do simple science experiments and we're showcasing a lot today. My films are Milk Magic. Online and social media is a great outlet for anybody who has autism because it really breaks down communication barriers. We get amazing stories from parents and teachers and children saying how much they love it. So we really like it and we love being here. I, I like to feel the people here. It's basically a chemical reaction. It's, ex it's called exothermic. That means it releases heat. So what's happening there, we added soap and uh, hydrogen peroxide, which is basically water with an extra uh, uh, oxygen. So when you add the catalyst, you saw the President Levy adding the catalyst, what's happening is you release the water, and there's a uh, soap in there too. That's what created the foam. And with some coloring, it makes it look nice. I just want them to learn, because it's all about learning, maybe like, uh, consider uh, a, a, a career in science or something, especially for the kids, maybe get more interested, you know? What we're trying to do is we're trying to build interactive experiential learning for children at a young age to get them inspired to become programmers and engineers. The computer science is, for me, it's important because this is where the skills are going. We want to try to inspire a do-it-yourself revolution amongst this new generation of kids. And that's the flip classroom concept. Programming off and off is considered only certain type of people can do it. And this example you saw showed that actually anyone can do it. And hopefully that kind of breaks down the barrier a little bit. Center for Urban Energy is here as well, and they've brought along a, uh, an electric car. And all around us are exhibits which are highlighting uh, energy use in an urban environment. Part of that urban environment is cars, and right now they're all gas-powered, nasty gas. But if we could power them with something else that wasn't polluting, contributing to greenhouse gases, like electricity, wouldn't that be great? Right now, we're working on renewables in Ontario especially. And so we're looking on all kinds of ways to store that energy when the sun is shining and the wind is blowing. Right now, power is flowing from the grid into the car. But why couldn't it flow the other way, from the car into the grid? If we converted 5% of the 7.5 million cars in Ontario to electrics, that's over 400,000 electric batteries plugged into the grid that could be the storage source for our renewable energy and that energy could be used right here in an urban environment. So today uh, we're uh, here at Science Rendezvous promoting science education. Uh, specifically for us, we promote science education for children. We got to actually have students build their own rockets and come and launch their own bottle rockets, which is a lot of fun. I think it's also uh, really fabulous to be involved in, in the industry as a whole uh, with, with different organizations that focus on science education and uh, I think it's really great for us to be part of this. We're really happy to be part of Science Rendezvous. It's a fabulous event and uh, I think it's one of the best locations to have Science Rendezvous right at Dundas Square here in Toronto.